Uh, welcome, oh, everybody. Yeah. It's Indie Worldwide. <laughs> we got Mash again, helping us out, finding cool founders to talk to today with, with Elliot. Only change, I think, since our last one is this is a moderated session. So if you have questions, let us know in the chat and we'll we'll bring people up one at a time and hopefully manage the chaos a little bit. Don't have much too much preamble today, so I think I'll just hand it over to Mash and then Mash, you can hand it to Elliot and uh, we'll roll with it. And oh, uh, I guess yeah. the other thing is, same as usual, we got like 45 minutes, an hour scheduled for Elliot, and then after that we'll have time for one-on-ones if you have time to stick around. All right. All you, Mash. Fantastic, man. Well, first of all, thank you guys so much for joining. You know, Elliot and I have been working together on Sparrow, where he's a startup advisor. The reason I wanted to bring him over to you guys is because he's built a business from zero to $2 million in annual revenue. And that's not easy. And it's definitely not easy if you don't have your positioning down, because your positioning determine, determines whether or not customers understand what the hell you're selling, whether your web page resonates with people, whether your sales calls resonate with people, whether your marketing campaigns are effective. So if your positioning isn't solid, and if you don't know how to understand the positioning for your product, it becomes really tough to actually just get stuff done as a founder. And that's why here we have man of the hour, Mr. Elliot. I'll hand the, over, hand the mic over to him and then enjoy the presentation. Once again, what a, a nice presentation. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to, to share my screen with you. Hopefully it will work. All right, so let's keep on that one. So you introduced me very quickly, but uh, to, to explain to everyone what is EduSign very quickly. We, we have in France at least courses where we need to sign a piece of paper to attest that we are present. So an attendance sheet. This sheet uh, is what gets the funds for the courses, for the training organization, universities, companies even. So we digitize and automate all the attendance process with digita digitized attendance sheet, but also e-signatures for documents and now surveys so that we have all the documents needed in the education space. So we have, even though we have e-signatures, for example, we did not focus on anything besides education. So even though we have some clients that use our product for other things. All right, so first of all, I'd like to have something that is a bit uh, interactive. So you can join this Slido, Slido presentation and tell me what do you think positioning means? And we'll start from, from there maybe. Being unique, I think it's how people see your product, understand it, okay. Articulate your difference, yes. Marketing niche, uh, marketing niche. I, I think it's a little bit uh, different, but yes, some somewhat. Find your product market fit. All right. So sure, that can help at least. To competitive advantage differentiator. To answer to a question, to the question, why are you in the market? Why should they choose you? Okay. So make sure people know what you do and especially what you don't do. Right. Who is buying from you and why? The story that your brand tells stands for. Okay, so these are pretty much all good answers. I'm not sure what you meant by marketing niche exactly, but uh, beside that, I, I think that uh, all the, the, the answers are quite correct, or at least some part of it. So for example, being unique is obviously the goal of, of positioning, but it doesn't mean that it is positioning at home, at a, at a global level. So I think it's how people see your product and understand it. I think it's actually maybe the best definition here because it means how people are going to position your company compared to other products. So I think it's a, it's quite a good definition. And obviously it's going to help you find your product market fit, maybe at least it should help you. And who is buying from you and why it would be maybe the consequence of your positioning, because obviously if you position yourself from one point of view for one specific buyer, you are not going to be, well, attractive for some kind of people and more attractive to others. All right, so thank you for, for, your, uh, for your answers so far. I hope it helped a little bit uh, clarify what, what that can be. And so first of all, what is bad positioning? So let's go straight into the, the depth of it. What is bad positioning? So first of all, it's basically nothing that is clear. So bad positioning is when you have unclear call to action or multiple call to action when you go into a page, for example, if you have incoherent brand usage. So for example, at the design, we use yellow. Obviously, we're not going to use green and to use purple wouldn't make sense. So we try to always use the same colors, the same language, the same 
type of marketing and even in the product as well. If you have too many offers, so it means that nothing is going to be clear. So there is actually this little experiment that did that, that happened in Switzerland where uh, Swiss watchmakers had a had an issue with with their sales. So they, they called a, an expert that told them, well, you have 12 models, you have 12 watch models. Could you try to reduce that to three? So it's very it's not natural to it's unnatural to to go from something that you have created to reduce it to something very specific. So if you have many, too many offers, it's going to be harder to sell your product because you know humans are very bad bad at doing taking decisions. So you should have very few offers. If you want to try to explain everything, if you have a very very long copywriting in general, obviously there are some exceptions to everything that I say, but in general, it means that you are going to have some issue about the, the story that you tell and how people are going to perceive your product. It should be very straightforward, very simple. And obviously, if your customers are going to say, what, what's your, what problem are you solving again? It's where you have a very bad positioning because positioning also means that you should be very clear about where you are. And so that means that you should be very clear about the problem that you have, uh, that you are trying to solve and that your customers have and the solutions obviously that you provide to that problem. So basically if nothing is clear, if every little part of your product, branding, website, whatever, because branding positioning is not just about your landing page, it's also your product. Your product is a reflection of your marketing, your branding. So for example, at EduSign, we have a very clear, and at least we would think so, very clear modern website, and we try to reflect that into the product. So uh, if you have a very clear marketing website, you should have a very clear product. And if you have a very clear product, you should have a very clear marketing website as well. So it also means, and that's what we saw with some of the answers before, it's when it's not recognizable. So your brand, obviously, the ultimate goal of your positioning is to be recognizable. It means that, for example, in France, people are going to associate yellow to EduSign because they know that they don't even know our name sometimes, but they, they know that if they see something in the education space that is yellow, it may be EduSign. So that's one way. To, to achieve that, obviously it could be very different things. So sometimes it will be a sound, sometimes it will be the, the name, sometimes it will be something else. But the goal, the ultimate goal is to be recognizable for something very specific so that you have a very clear positioning so that people know what you're good for and what you're maybe bad for actually, uh, which is quite good being defined, but what you're not good at, it's also being defined, which is better than not being defined at all. So being very clear about what you do and being recognizable is the ultimate goal. So if you're not recognizable, it means that you didn't have a good positioning. So what is good positioning? Pretty much everything, everything that we saw before, the opposite. Uh, so it should be very clear. I told it a little bit. Very clear. Very, very effective. Very unique branding. But so, uh, how do you determine that? Uh, well, first of all, what are you the best at? So I think uh, I like this image. Uh, I like to use it because I, I think that as a founder, as a startup founder, sometimes we get our hand into the product, but not enough with uh, the phone actually, and with our customers. So we should try to spend more time with our customers to try to understand what are the pain, what are the, the real pain behind. I, I don't mean the, the first step. So I don't mean, for example, for a design, it would be, yes, I have uh, an attendance sheet. It's boring because it's paper. I want to digitize that. No, actually, that's not the pain that we solve. The pain that we solve is much deeper. So we try to dig and dig to arrive at the conclusion that the pain is if they don't have this attendance sheet, then they are going to waste a lot of time. And if they waste a lot of time, then they are not going to have the, the money to, to have the, the good education that they want to provide. So actually, we are going to be funding insurance uh, rather than just a, uh, an attendance sheet provider, so to speak. So first thing, 
what are you best at? And it could be anything actually. So talk about your product with your customer, but talk about the problem that they have and try to dig that up. Try to see also what your competitors, customers think about that product. That's actually one thing that we did at the beginning. We didn't have the product so far and we didn't have a branding. We didn't have a positioning, anything. So we called, actually I called many of our co possible competitors, customers and to try to figure out what happened to to them because we we knew that there was something that wasn't working because we 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 saw people coming to us for for the problems they had so for for example with edusign the competition had and this is one example but actually it was true for many other competitors that we had and it could be very different for your company but it's probably something along those lines because if you are building a startup you're probably facing big companies you are probably facing maybe other startups but you shouldn't worry too much about other startups you should worry much more about what people use today so for example excel files paper or big big software so sad colors poor customer experience no trial only demo unclear pricing those are those are all things that you will find again and again in your in your product in your area of expertise. If you have the, um, the unluckiness to to be in a, in an industry where you have very very good product, even at scale with very huge scale ups and very, for example, if you want to try to compete at a at a level of Notion and ClickUp. We need a lot more than just positioning and it will be really hard. But for most people, you have some specific things that you can find that are not doing well with other competitors. So you can tailor your offer based on that. So for example, for a design, we try to be not boring. So we used yellow, we used modern illustrations, we used a clear website. We try to have a world-class customer experience. So that means that we answer in general, on average, I think it's two minutes. We have no no lags, very few bugs, very very fast answers, and so we, we try to provide as many things as possible, videos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, much more than our competitors. We have a free trial with fast signups. So obviously, this is going to cost us some people because. Uh, we know that some big corporations are going to want a demo and maybe it's not going to work. But once again, the goal is to position yourself. So it's okay to lose some people. We have a clear pricing. You can buy in 30 seconds if you want. And we try to be young and friendly and modern and intuitive. So we try to differentiate ourselves from the competition. And at the beginning, because I, I know sometimes it can be a little bit hard to, to know if it's going to work. And at the beginning, I, I want to tell you a small story. At the beginning, we we thought that yellow was going to be very risky because it's it's hard actually to have a yellow brand because most big companies want security, want safety, want a product, reliable product, want something that works at scale. So they don't want to rely on a clunky little startup that doesn't have a product that works at scale. So we lost some deals at the beginning because of that, because we had a brand positioning that was too young, too fast, too maybe too modern for them. So but that's okay, because in the long run, we attract the customer that we wanted to attract, which means young, interesting customers that had money, that wanted to try something new, that gave us a lot of feedback. And once we had that, we we're able to convince many big companies because once you have not maybe the monopole or many shares, but once you have a, a good chunk of, 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 of shares in your market, you are going to be able to attract those, those companies as well. It doesn't matter what branding that you have. But the good thing now is that we are very recognizable and we had specific offers to provide to the customer, our ideal customers actually. So a few mistakes that we made, because obviously we, we made a lot. We still probably have many things to improve, that, that's for sure. But I, I think that it's good to reflect on what we did in the past. And by the way, if you have any question, answer, please feel free to, to have them in the chat and I will answer them after that. So for example, this was one of our first landing pages. It was as you can see, the title, Online Answers and Sheets. 
So it's quite clear. It's not something that doesn't work at all. I mean, it brought us many customers, but there is something wrong about it. The issue here is that I don't talk about the benefits. I don't talk about the problem. I just have this small sentence after paper sheets are a source of wasted time and stress. It just makes students enrollment easy, fast, and digital. Okay, that's good. But it's not what people are going to, to, to keep in mind. They are going to keep in mind online attendance sheets. So hopefully for us, people were, or, were already looking for our startup. So it didn't matter that much. But once we changed our tagline from online attendance sheets to Five times less time, five times less times, yeah, spent on student attendance. We actually almost doubled our conversion rate just with this line. So we did a lot of A B testing, and the best A B test that we did was this one. And why is that? I think that it's because we have this number, this very clear, concrete, achievable number, which is five times less. Five times is, some, I think, numbers are very powerful, and I would advise to try to have a number in your title if you can. Less time spent. So this is the objective. This is actually the true objective, the reason why people come to our website. It's not to have a digitized attendance sheet. It's to spend less time on attendance. And so the pain is student attendance. This is a real pain because they don't want to deal with that. It's a very boring job to, to deal with attendance. They want to do something else. They want to talk with students. Maybe they want to do other things. I, I don't know, but I, at least we are, we are quite sure that they don't want to spend time on that. So if, if we save time on attendance sheets, on attendance tracking, then we are valuable to them. So try to find something that will make you very valuable and obviously if you can find something that is going to be different from your competitor it's going to be much better because if you just copy paste your competitor taglines probably not going to be for the best even though sometimes it's sadly better than what you have today so try to change an a b test i would recommend by uh, by the way uh, google optimize which is a free tool that you can use on pretty much every website to A-B test your tagline. It works quite well. I think it's, uh, it has given us some opportunities to improve our web pages very, very quickly and very easily. So another thing, another mistake that we, we, we had uh, is actually we, we wanted to, at the beginning, have something that would be appealing to everyone. And obviously, this is a goal, the ultimate goal in the long run to have a product that would serve pretty much everyone that you can think about. If your mother can use, can use your product, but your friend also and strangers can use it, it's, it's the best, of course. But at the beginning, you should have something that is very specific. And I think to be recognizable is to be different. And to be different means that it's okay to get emotional responses. It's okay to be different. It's okay to have some people tell you how I, I don't like this color. Why do you use it everywhere? We had some kind of answers like that. It's okay. It's perfectly fine. And it, yeah, actually, I think it's a, it's a good measurement. If you don't have anyone telling you, I don't really like what you do, then maybe it's a little bit boring. Maybe they don't care enough to tell you. If it's provocative enough, if it's different enough, it should actually get some reaction and hopefully you will get like us many more positive reactions than a negative one obviously we had a lot of positive reactions saying well this is good to see young brand this is good to see something colorful for once it's not boring it works quite well it's intuitive etc etc obviously your product has to follow but i think that it's a good memory to good thing to keep in mind to to have a product that get people somewhat emotional i think it's it's good if you can achieve that so you can achieve that with colors we can achieve that with a provocative copywriting i saw many brands doing that with uh, very aggressive for example titles if you have in b2c if you are in b2c especially you can do a lot of things along those lines and you can also for example point to the the competitor or maybe not directly the competitor but the the, the thing that you are going to to face because in David versus Goliath, people are always going to be for David. People like to be on the small side of things. They want to, to have the challenger wins. They want you to win, actually, as a startup. If you don't think so, 
try again, try to speak with people about your startup, you will see that they want you to succeed, actually. So if you provide a story where you have a small guy that have a very good solution, obviously you need to be David, not just someone crushed by Goliath, then it's going to be very good for you. So now maybe another slide though. Um, so what companies do, does the audience do? So do you think have great positioning? All right, so Intercom, yeah. So actually, yeah, I love Intercom. We use it at EduSign for a lot of things. I think it's a very, very good product. And I think it's in the worldwide, yes. Okay, <laughs> fair enough, self-promotion, I like it. So Intercom is a very good product, but I, I think the, the, um, the difference between Intercom and your startup is that Intercom has actually the best product in the marketplace by far, by far. It's interesting to, to see the branding and that's why they ask you to pay a lot for it, but it's maybe not something that is achievable for, for everyone. But I think it's very good to, to look at Intercom. I would also recommend their blog. They have a lot of articles about branding and about products. It's very good. So localize I, I don't know this one. Yeah. YC, obviously YC, because it's a space incubator in the world. BMW, Lamlist. Yeah, Lamlist is a very good example. So. B2B, I don't remember exactly the tagline, but like not so. If you have a B2B business, it's okay to be not boring. It's okay to not be for everyone. And I think Lemlis get that. They are not going to try to sell to big companies at first. Now they probably do, but at the beginning they didn't try. It worked for them because they, they were alongside clients that were targeting. So Southwest Airlines, Southwest Airlines, I think uh, with Delta Airlines, for example, is very um very interesting because i think ryanair in europe are going to to have a very good positioning it's uh it's cost based it's price based so it's interesting to to talk about the different kind of positioning that you can have to differentiate yourself actually we have a positioning where we are going to position ourselves based on the experience the customer experience so we are going to try to have the best customer experience for our customer this is basically our goal in everything that we do so it doesn't matter the, the the price of our competitors. We can be twice more expensive. That's that's fine as long as we have the best customer experience. But you can also have a price based positioning, which is probably a little bit harder in SaaS. Actually, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you have a physical product and you can achieve that uh, with a smart way, like Rainer did, that one way to do it. You can also have well, actually some positioning with a moat, a very clear moat when you're going to to have one way to lock your 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 customers. So for example, we, we have some SaaS companies that are going to offer a free product that are going to lure, to attract some some companies into their, uh, their, their, their nets and they're going to sell you a lot of product afterwards. So basically every luxury brand for clothes, yes, I agree. I think they, they try to have something very specific. I think obviously in B2C, in fashion, it's going to be easier to have a very good positioning. However, it's going to be harder to market your product. Virgin Group, Lulu Lemon, Slido, Notion. I don't know actually Slido that well, so I, I wouldn't know. Notion, I think, is very interesting. So there is a, this comparison between Notion and ClickUp, which is quite interesting because if you look at it in depth, Notion is a product that has started way before ClickUp, but ClickUp went way further and way faster and they achieved something that Notion didn't, which is giving the opportunity, for example, to have an API. <laughs> and for a long time, Notion didn't have one, so they lost a lot of customers for that. But Notion stands for uh, a very good product that won't have any bug that works perfectly well, that is very, very smooth, very elegant. So I think it's a very good example of positioning because ClickUp will never be able to achieve the positioning of Notion and maybe vice versa, by the way. Once you have a position, it's very hard to move yourself from one position to another because people are going to remember your brands based on something that they have in the, in the past, even though you, you've changed. So it's very important to think early on about your positioning, even though it can be changed, it's actually quite hard to change because you are going to build up on your customers. And so once you, you change something, you can change your colors, but changing the way you work, for example, is going to be really hard. You cannot have a product that outsource your support and the next day is going to have the best customer experience in the world. It's going to be really hard to do.
All right, so thank you for that. Oh, I have a Q&A here. What did the design do at the beginning to solicit emotional responses from potential, potential customers? Okay, so let's let's answer this one very quickly. I think that being being a, a young team, because we, we were three young young people with a yellow brand that had, we, we had a way to to talk with people that was quite, quite different. So we very often, so in France, we have, you know, like uh, in, in English, you have you, 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 you. So it doesn't depend who you are talking about. You are going to say you, but in France, you are going to say like you very, uh, like a high level, if I may, and you like your friend. So we, we try to talk with customers like we talked to a friend. And this is something that people are not going to accept sometimes if they are 55 years old working in a big corporation. Sometimes we got some emotional responses like, do not call me that. Uh, and, and so this is the kind of things that you can do in your writing. We can have the colors. I think for a design, the color is something in itself that is quite strong. Yellow is very different from what you can find elsewhere, but also in general, the, the clearness of the website. We try to have something as with, with a lot of white spaces, very clear. And we, we had some emotional responses from that because for example, we decided sometimes to delete some features in our product because they weren't used enough when our competitors are, are going to add as many features as possible. So we can talk a little bit about product management, but I'm not going to, to, to expand too much, but basically you are going to also have many choices to, to, to make in, in your product as well. And obviously your product should reflect what your positioning is about. So if you have a very clear product, I told that before, but if you have a very clear product, your marketing website should be like that. So for design, since we had a very clear, I think, marketing website, we tried to limit the number of features and we still do. Very often we say no to customers, not because we cannot do it because we can do many things, but because we don't want to do it because it's going to be useful maybe for 1% of our customer base. So we decide to not do it. And it's okay for us to not be the software with the most features, but we're going to be the software with the best customer experience, with the best working features, which is our positioning. But it could be something else for you, obviously. So now let's talk about some recommended tactics that we can use to find your positioning. I think that one thing that people sometimes forget is that you are going to sell to your customers. So obviously one person that is going to talk well about your product are going to be your customers. So use your customers' words. If we go back into the presentation to our landing page, our home page, the words five time, five time less time spent on attention sheets. Those are actually words from one of our customers that told me, well, you saved me five, five times the time that I spent per week. So, so we use those words. You can obviously use it, use them in testimonials, use them in the, your newsletters, your webinar, whatever. But you can also use them on your website, even in your products. So for example, we changed in our products some wording some in, in, in the tabs name or in some titles because we knew that customers were going to say it this way and not this way. So really listen to your customers, take your phone and you, you can uh, get many feedback from that. One thing that we did very early on uh, after studying our competitors, after studying the market, after phoning a lot of people is build your minimum valuable brand. Once you have your minimum valuable brand, obviously you can always revisit it. You can always try to A-B test a few things, especially if you don't have product market fit, you should test a lot of things. So try to, to move that. But at the beginning, it's good to, to do this exercise that will help you you, you can, by the way, type that on Google and you will find some guys, I'm, uh, I'm quite sure. So you, you are going to define what are going to be your values, what are going to be your colors, what are going to be your way of picking, your way of writings, what are going to be important and different, differentiate you, etc., etc. So you are going to, to build a few things around that and help us to define what we want it to, to be. And I think you should always come back to that when you are doing a marketing thing, because you, you can sometimes use your uh, colors, for example, but be 
a little bit off brand because you are not following following your your minimal valuable brand or your branding book. So that is that is one exercise that I would recommend. Another one would be be loud about what you do better. And I don't mean what you do best. It doesn't mean that it's do what you do better. People don't care about what you do best. People care about what you do much better than the others. What is going to be unique about you? So at Edusign, we are very clear about, at least we, we try to be when we talk to people, especially maybe not in writings, but when we talk with people, we, we try to be very clear about uh, the, the kind of experience that we want them to have. So we ask our customers constantly to give us feedback, like constantly, because they know that customer experience is at the heart of Edusign. And we want to make sure that they understand that it's important for us that they have the best customer experience. And if you repeat something to your customers, you will see something very strange happen because people always think that marketing doesn't impact them, but I can tell you that it does and a lot. And if you ask your customers after some months, you will see that they are going to use your own words. So for example, if I ask someone to describe EduSign to me, they are probably going to say, good customer experience or they're going to say it's intuitive it's modern they are friendly these are the things that are going to come back and actually we did some surveys after one year and a half to find what people really thought about our startup so we took some students that went to our customers and asked them about that and we we discovered that they were using our own words so this is important use the word and really use it again and again and again. It's not okay to say something once. You should say it everywhere. So if you're all about your customer experience, you should say it everywhere. But if you if it's all about the price, for example, then say it everywhere. Doesn't say it just on your home page and pricing page. It should be very clear that your product is the cheapest one. When I go to the FAQ, when I go to the Ahab Center, when I talk to someone at your company, it should reflect that as well. So be loud about what you do better than the others. I think it's going to be something that is going to position yourself because it's going to be very clear that you are the best at that. So finally, how to use, well, not maybe finally, but how to use customer interviews to determine your product messaging. Because I think that, okay, you need to talk a lot with customers, but how are you going to, to do that? So support is a gold mine. So. Honestly, nobody is above support. You should spend some time on support, especially if you are at the beginning of your startup. I, I think answered like 10,000 tickets in two years. So it still takes some of my time. It's a, it's a freaking gold mine. And I don't mean just looking at the stats. I mean, really reading and answering to your customers. Uh, you should not, in my opinion, maybe if you have a price-based positioning, but otherwise you should not outsource your support, especially at the beginning, I think is going to be a great strength. And actually we have a lot of customers that went just from free trial to support and then clients. So support is going to be also salespersons somewhat. So, so it's important to do that. Obviously you can also use a chatbot to help you guide your customers. You're not forced to, to do everything about yourself, but we're not here to talk about customer experience. So you can also have multiple multiple tools such as Google Analytics, Amplitude, Hotjar, Intercom, et cetera. So these are all tools that we use at Edusign to track our customers' behavior. And I think that customers' behaviors are going to reflect what they are going to try to achieve with your product. And then you can, well, move your positioning around that. So for example, if you have a product that offers maybe three services and you see that one service is going to be used 10 times more than the others. You should brand your your company just about this service. So for example, one thing, by the way, maybe you noticed, but if I go back in time here, I told you at the beginning that at EduSign, we do attendance sheets, surveys, and e-signatures for documents. You can look at the tagline here and you will realize that I do not talk about documents or surveys. I just talk about main point, the things that are that people are going to come to a design for, 
ends and maybe I'm going to sell them other things, but I'm not trying to sell them like a, the ultimate educational tool. No, no, no. It's very specific, very, very specific. And still now after 2 million in annual recurring revenue, we are still focused on one thing. So in one very specific thing. So don't try to, to do everything. It's okay to have multiple products and just talk about one product at the beginning. Let's come back to that. So we also have the ability to get in feedback directly from the product and we we try to be transparent about that and i think it's uh it's a good way to 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 make sure that your customers all your customers get a, a vote because sometimes you are going to phone for example some customers but many people don't want to to be on the phone especially me for example so they are going to just want to have a vote with a click and that shouldn't shouldn't be something that doesn't exist for them it should be available so once you have obviously all that, you should have enough wording, enough copywriting to build your homepage, to build your your voice. So positive signals that you are getting towards strong positioning. So we are getting towards the end here. I think that once you have defined your positioning, you know that you are going to be very different because of this, because of that. You know that you are going to be much better than your competitors on this point exactly. And you are going to talk about this thing this way to this kind of customers, because obviously I didn't talk about persona, but you should have a very clear persona when you are going to position yourself. Because obviously if you position yourself as a, as a perfect tool for startup, but you are talking like a big brand, it's not going to work. So it should be all aligned with your ideal customers and obviously, and hopefully an existing market with an existing problem. And that's something that is just a nice to have, but that's a product marketing, product market fit side. So positive signals that you are getting towards strong positioning. I think that we, we can have a few ideas here, but basically once you have some people that are going to tell you, oh yeah, I know your company, they just don't get your name, but they know what you do and they know maybe your colors, maybe they know why you are special. I think this is where you know that you, you, you have a somewhat of a good positioning because you you have something that is going to differentiate yourself and they're not going to just say oh you are the company that does that and i know tens of them and i don't see why it's different now they should be very very clear about what you're you're about and if that they cannot say one thing that is going to be very special about your product then maybe it's not uh, it's not strong enough in terms of positioning and i think that's that's it for me uh, i try to to cover a few things, but now, now I think that we, we can go back to to go back to to the presentation. All right, Smash, Anthony, what what do you think about that? Do you have any question in the chat, or was it okay? Oh, yes, it's great. If uh, anybody has questions, feel free to request to join, and we can add you straight to this uh, video or post in the chat, and Mesh or I can can ask for you. This whole thing has been recorded. Also, yeah, and I see I see Miriam and Radu. I, I think I see them on the bottom. I think we can add them up as well. Let us know if you want us to add you to the to the video so you can ask your questions. And also, Elliot, really cool presentation, man. Like it's it's really interesting. Like I every time you give these presentations, you take a different angle, and whenever you take the different angle, it's fun to see. You know, like from the outside when we see a founder who's making like two million annual revenue, it seems oh, you know what, they have their positioning figured out. It must have been easy. But when you hear these stories personally, at least, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because you had to talk to the customers, you, like the whole yellow color, you know, like all of that. Like you had to talk to your customers, use their keywords, understand their pain points. And what I really, really found interesting is that you're right. You don't talk about attendance sheets on your headline. You talk about the benefit that they'll get. It's something mm -hmm. I had to learn because when I made my first landing page, I was getting nada, niche, zero conversions, because <laughs> um, the messaging was so bad. I didn't even have a, like an email text box, it was just bad. But then later on, I learned that people don't really care much about what you're doing, but rather what they'll get. And that just mm. blew my mind, right? So really, really cool stuff. At the beginning, at least, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Obvi yeah okay. Because obviously the product should follow, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Got a good um, I, question, I question from question. Pat there. Go for it, Anthony. Did you want to? He says, "Terrific presentation, Elliot. When positioning a community, would you position for belonging or support? 
or the more specific benefits. So like biggest deliverable from the group or creativity and education. Positioning for community. So uh, you, you're trying to build a community or product about communities? I'm, I'm not quite sure here. Uh... Let's assume building a community. Okay, small yeah, business okay. owner community. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a good question. I'm not a community builder, actually. So I, I'm not sure I have the, the best answer to that. But I think, honestly, it's just about what you want to, to build here uh, in, in this case. Because uh, I, from experience, we try to do both. I think it's very much easier to to do a support group because it, you, you, you are going to talk about your product which is why people are going to be here. I think it's easier to do that. But I think it's it's more rewarding if you can have a creativity and education group, because obviously if you succeed in that way, you are going to have maybe some people that comes from other companies that are not your customers, that are maybe going to go to your community and then because become customers. But I think it's much harder to do. So I would maybe advise to start with some of your best customers, try to see what they like, what they want to talk about. One thing that we did, we, we, asked, we asked them actually where they got the information from when they wanted to, to learn about their, their topic. Uh, and in, in our case, actually, they, they didn't learn so much. So support was more important for them than the education part. But maybe, for example, I saw Lemlist, uh, which, which was a company that we saw earlier. Uh, Lemlist has a very strong community on Facebook where they're going to talk about the product, but also about outbound campaigns and sales in general, which, which works just fine. But I think it's easier to start with your product at the beginning. I hope it helps. <laughs> got another question here from Radu. He says, curious how long it took you to get to your current positioning and are you still experimenting with your positioning? If not, how long did it take you? How long did you iterate over your messaging before you decided you were at the good enough? Yeah. So uh, I think we were quite lucky at the beginning because we, I think we, we found pretty much straight away uh, a, a brand that, has, that we're going to be quite different. So we, we built the MVB, the minimum valuable brand, before building the product, just for you to understand. So it was more important for me to get the marketing right than the product. So I think it, it, it was pretty much from the beginning, but obviously it took us a few months to be ranked on Google for specific SEO keywords to get some customers, to get some recognize, recognizable customers as well. And yes, of, of course, we are still experimenting, even though I think that right now, we can be sure to say that, yes, we have quite good branding, at least in France, but we are still experimenting. I, I, actually, I think that every brand should be experimenting. And I just mean experimenting on the website, but you can also do it in your product and elsewhere. Well, always, like basically always. We always have an A-B test running, always somewhere and sometimes multiple at the same time. But yeah, so I, I think it depends on the industry to answer your question very specifically. I think we, we were in an industry where we had very few competitors and one of our differentiators was to to be very digital, at, actually, to, to be better at SEO, better at marketing. So it was easier for us to focus on that and become number one on this topic. Uh, obviously, if you're going to compete in a very, very crowded niche, red ocean, it's going to take you longer. But obviously, the reward may be greater. So, And I think the one, one thing, by the way, if you are a very crowded space, you should be even more specific. I think you should. I saw sometimes some businesses, it was amazing, like really, really, like, uh, you know, this dog ramp, maybe you saw it on Twitter, but this dog ramp business, like dog ramp, like one freaking product about dog making 20 millions a year. So you can imagine that in some industries, you can have one product, one small thing, very small thing that is going to make millions. So you don't have to have a broad statement about being the best at everything. And actually, with EduSign, which is a very small product in the educational space, sometimes we invoice five times more expensive contracts than the biggest software that they use in their school. Just for you to, to imagine that. So they, we, we have competitors that have maybe 2,000 features, we have like three, and, and they pay less for, for the 2,000 features. So be specific is rewarding. Oh, you, you found the dog ram business, nice. Yeah, that's Good. the, uh, that's the link. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, if uh, you Google dog ramp business Twitter, it comes up, or I put the link there in the session. All right, so we got about 
40 minutes, a little bit less here left where we can do some one on ones. I want to thank Elliot again so much for giving you, giving us your time today and, and MASH for helping set all this up. I believe we have another event coming up next week, which is the Indie Worldwide September meetup. No special guests there, just a bunch of indie founders coming together, talking about some cool stuff and getting to know each other. Elliot, you're welcome to stick around for the one on ones if you got some time, want to meet some peeps. But regardless, yeah, it's great to sure. meet you. Yeah, I have a, I have some times until uh, I think fifteen, yeah, five fifteen. Sweet. All right. Well, I'll see you over there. Mash, you got any parting words? Yeah, I was just like typing it up. Sorry, my, I had to close my video because my second laptop started notifying me. I had to send some emails. Apologies for that. I hate going missing for AMAs, but no, it, this was super cool. If you guys want to talk more with Elliot, let Anthony or myself know, and we'll arrange that. But outside of that, Elliot, super awesome presentation. Thanks for sharing your story, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.